Excuse me, little dog. <clears throat> All right, guys. It is a hot, sticky, muggy, miserable day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas. It is now Thursday, <coughs> May 5th, 2022. It is Cinco de Mayo. As uh, hoping for one line of tornadoes to come through uh, Austin, Texas here maybe later before the big heat wave hits tomorrow. Uh, should be heading back to Bugs in a Jar Farm. But speaking of Bugs in a Jar Farm, before I get into my regular daily chronicle of the collapse, uh, I want to revisit the comments uh, that I got on that video, that kind of weird little video I made yesterday about Fermi's paradox, about why space aliens may not have ever come to Earth or why we haven't found them and whatnot. Uh, but anyway, from right there at Bugs in a Jar Farm, I all the, the caretaker, the engine that keeps that place alive, realize, realize, real lies had this. This was his comment uh, on Fermi's paradox, which is more, uh, I don't know, uh, turning into the, the human obvious, no, nothing paradoxical about it, uh, as realize, realize, realize. Well, let us know. Take it away, brother. <clears throat> Every civilization in human history has been run into the ground by an out of touch, corrupt, greedy, violent ruling class. And it always ends in collapse and horror without exception. It's our factual history. Civilization by definition is a cycle of conquest, exploitation, collapse. And our current civilization is the pinnacle of this cycle and probably the end of the cycle. We have covered all the bases of our self-destruction like no other civilization in history. The existential threats are closing in all around us. We did have the, quote, choice to end this cycle, as it is no mystery. We merely had to mature past greed, ego, and violence, which we refuse to accomplish. Just the way that we envision, interpret, and teach our history, like Alexander the Great, all of the empires that we celebrate, the Romans, British, Ottoman, Persian, etc. Instead of condemning these empires and conquerors as immature, violent, self-destructive, psychopathic leaders and civilizations proves beyond any doubt that we cannot escape the cycle. Usually it takes empires some time to collapse, but the way ours is cobbled together with just-in-time supply chains weapons that can destroy everything that we in nature have created, feedback loops that degrade everything we depend on for our survival in the natural world, and our civilization doesn't bode well for a slow decline. Everything is interconnected and interdependent, <clears throat> when it tips, it will be a cascading collapse of literally everything. It will be hell 
on earth coming to a city or town near you. And there you go. My response uh, to realize, realize, realize. That is why I am hiding out at Bugs in a Jar Farm, enjoying it while I still can. The catfish may be big enough to eat this summer, <coughs> provided they have not washed away in a flash flood. <laughs> anyway, we got some great comments. I had wondered <coughs> what happened to uh, our old friend Cougar W, who is a sometime, some kind of retired biologist. Uh, I thought that I had offended Cougar and run him off, but uh, Cougar is back. And this is Cougar W's spin on the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox is based on the observation that we do not see any other advanced civilizations in the cosmos. At the simplest, one solution to the apparent paradox may be that there simply are no advanced civilizations outside our own and thus we are utterly alone. My personal fave. If one cannot accept the existential abyss so implied, then you may want to consider other solutions, you know, solutions to the paradox, of which there are scores, some more technical than others. Perhaps we are looking for the wrong things as evidence, and there is evidence out there, but we are too dumb to recognize it. Or maybe there is advanced intelligence out there, but everyone is deliberately hiding. This article takes the approach that advanced civilizations take a look at the cosmos, shrug their shoulders, tentacles, fronds, and say, so ugly, what a waste of space, and decide to stay home. The very instant you make that decision, you embark on a campaign of sustainability. You turn your brain's ganglia hypernodes to the task of cutting the fat, rid yourself of the aristocracy or the broad equivalent, and engage in the eternal task of living for the moment eating, slurping, phagocytizing, <clears throat> exactly no more than your planet, host, or vat can supply. <coughs> but if that is true, then it is utterly indistinguishable from human beings being utterly alone in the cosmos. So I win anyway. By the way, most of the reasons why there are no other advanced civilizations in the cosmos have to do with biology. And if Enrico Fermi had been a biologist and not a physicist, he would not have proposed the paradox that bears his name. Every biologist knows there is no evidence for advanced civilizations. And on another point, while there might be plenty of UFOs and UAPs, these are not off-world alien origin. Period. Get over it, people. Nobody with enough ganglia hypernodes to build a space civilization is going to come to Earth to probe your anus. Jesus. <laughs> it's nice to have you back, Cougar W, but of course, uh, we're going to let Peter Lind uh, wrap up uh, the, the comments uh, here that I want to share with his. Th this is uh, 
Peter Lind, I, I, I love his comments. You start to notice with Peter, Peter's comments over the years that they seem to have a recurring theme which would be on my t-shirt, but I appear to have lost my t-shirt with Peter Lind's recurring theme. So Peter Lind, what is your, <clears throat> how are you weighing in on, uh, on the subject? Ah, so the pot does boileth over, and as the soup boils, the little bits and pieces of individuality get engulfed in the boiling broth and can do nothing but churn and marinate and lament, crying because they knew not how the soup would become. <laughs> so ends our fiesta of fecundity. So ends our golden age. So ends the miasma of mankind. One purchase too many, one biosphere too far, one soup too many, and one cauldron too far. As the maw of overconsumption opens, so the soup of humankind gets swallowed down, gets utterly negated, and becomes no more. And all we civilized little croutons floating in the broth, we simply swirl around upon the spoon only to be gulped down into oblivion in a final feeding frenzy of futility. At least we can say we had it all before it was gone. All then nothing, nothing unto eternity, our epitaph, our end. Yet we chiseled our fate with our own frail hands. In this, the final irony mocks our vanities. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Peter Lynn. So anyway, uh, you know, I really do love the comments on uh, on Collapse Chronicles. It brings a little uh, a little bit of highbrow to this to the Doomosphere. So keep your comments coming, and uh, I gotta wrap this up. And we're gonna come back with my regularly scheduled Chronicle of the Collapse about plastic and big oil. Oh my guys.